Before I Change My Mind is a Canadian film directed by Trevor Anderson and starring Vaughn Murray. In 1987, while the other students wonder if new kid Robin is a boy or a girl, Robin forges a complicated bond with the school bully, making increasingly dangerous choices to fit in. Now, I was able to see Before I Change My Mind early due to Movie Scene Canada. Thank you so much for letting me check this film out. You can find them on MovieScenecanada.com as well as Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, all the fun sites you guys know. Going into this film, I knew the baseline plot, which was what I read out to you there, and I knew it was a lower budget film on IMDb. It says it was about half a million dollars, which is impressive to just make a movie of this quality at that level, but really I didn't know much going into it. I didn't know it was Canadian, which always, you know, It'll hold a soft spot in my heart. And one thing I can say right away is that this film will hit and impact a lot of people. Vaughn Murray, I'm pretty sure I'm saying their name right, is the lead performer here. And they do such an incredible job. There's a lot of moments where you're just kind of observing what's happening. And just the subtlety on their face is absolutely brilliant. And with such a difficult character who is struggling themselves, that you then have an actor who has to betray that with a lot of just facial acting, not a lot of discussion about it in this film through dialogue, which I found really impressive. I think that this actor has a very, very bright future, and this is a phenomenal performance, especially for their age. When it comes to the other characters, though, I did find that a lot of them were throwaway characters. You see that especially in the first act. This film does have trouble setting up to what it really should be, because the second act is pretty good, and the third act, when it just kind of lets loose and flows is really when this film is at its absolute best. At times the story does feel like it is hitting certain points and there was a long part of this movie where I just knew everything that was coming up because it was just so obvious. It did feel almost like the first thoughts were just written down. It's like okay yeah we'll hit this point, we'll hit this point, we'll hit this point and when it progressed into something that kind of just felt like we were watching these characters and these days were just going along with them, that's when I was the most invested. And of course, a film like this has a bunch of cringy or kind of awkward moments, and I thought the way a lot of them were portrayed was very good. There were some moments that felt almost extreme, but didn't like get the reaction to get the time spent to them to what they deserved. So it did take away from the impact of some of those moments. But at the same time, it's kind of similar to eighth grade, the A24 movie that came out a few years ago, when you are just sitting there and you're just watching this like awkward conversation that you might have had once in your life. It's really, really interesting there. And the set design is also brilliant. The costumes, set design, locations, it really does look and feel like 1987. Sometimes some of the way Way the kids talk you know it, it is throwaway kind of dialogue that you'd expect and again these are young kids so there are moments that you know the the emotional impact varies due to the performances but again they are children so I'm not going to go into depth about that. Some of my favorite moments in this film were the VHS dream sequence-esque moments where they kind of would use it to transition between moments but it also suggests other stories that aren't really again discussed in dialogue but you're shown little bits and pieces of these past relationships, ongoing relationships, kind of struggling relationships and that was one of the most interesting aspects because there was a lot of this film that felt very back and forth with the way it was shot. I did like the way it was cut together but a lot of the visuals aren't too interesting earlier on when it is again just trying to hit all these points. This happens in the classroom, this happens in the schoolyard, this happens on the trip, all that stuff. Although it makes sense why it happens when it becomes these like longer takes. Just like when two characters will get up and leave the shot, it'll just be kind of an empty shot with a little cup at the bottom. That stuff was really interesting to me and there were a lot of ideas that I could see were there, although they weren't expressed to the best potential. And as I said, the film's title is a little bit misleading because I didn't find it so much of a film about uh, identity with just one character. It really felt like that was our main character and we were seeing it through their perspective. Although we had a character like the bully who was fitting in with the people that maybe they didn't expect to form a relationship with. And I found that the film was more grand in that sense and I really enjoy that. Although the title doesn't suggest it, I get why it is the way that it is. Before I Change My Mind is at its best when Trevor Anderson lets us sit in with these characters. The film has a hard time setting up because it feels as if it needs to hit certain plot points along the way, but the unique dream sequences and tender character moments really make this film strong. I'm going to give Before I Change My Mind a 3.5 out of 5. 
If you've seen this film or plan to watch it, let me know what you think of it down below. Again, thank you so much to Movie Scene Canada. Check out other links down below as well as my own. And this is my last video filmed in this location. So stay tuned for that. Thank you all for watching. I will see you guys next time. Over and out.